Okay. So you've decided that you're ready to hire a CEO and what is, what's the steps? Walk us through that. Yeah. So at a high level, you know, you've decided you want to live that lifestyle. Um, and then the next thing that people try to do as a mistake is they try to go from zero to hundred miles an hour and <laughs> get out of the business like tomorrow. And the reality is to maximize the chance of success, to hire a CEO to replace you, uh, you have to get the business ready to go. And depending upon what the situation of the business is at that time, that could be a three week process or that can be a three year process to get it to where it's profitable, systems are running well, you have a good leadership team in place, it's ready for you to hire a CEO. And so that foundation has to get built. And for most people and the times I've done it, it usually takes a six to nine month process um, to go start to lay that foundation. And that foundation is not only about getting the business ready, but it's also about getting your team ready. And I encourage people at that point to start to have a discussion around what your dreams are as an owner and to be realistic with them that you're going to say, hey, my goal in the, the near future is to transition and bring in a new CEO. I'm not the best person to CEO this primarily because it's not my dream for myself to, to be in here running the business every day. And I'm going to get somebody in here who's better than me. And then I'm going to support them and help them be great. And you tell that to your team and start to get them emotionally ready for the new leader to come in. And only then, once the business and the team are ready, then you start to run a process to really, truly hire a CEO. And that's really step three. And for me, it can be something where you hire internally and there's trade-offs there to elevate a candidate and to be the CEO to do that job. And then you can also go outside, which I like doing more um, because you can potentially bring in somebody who has a lot of perspective that isn't going to be making the mistakes you made when you were CEO because the new CEO <laughs> only knows the mistakes you were making, so we got to keep making them. So, but that's where you can go run a full process around that um, and just use the hiring process as we talk about and you bring somebody in. And there's those whole ball of wax of how you're supposed to do things differently in step four, you know, after the new CEO is in, but I'll pause there and you can go in any direction. No, no, that's good. Let's let, I want to hear step four. Yeah. Step four is really where you, after you bring in the CEO, you have to let them do that CEO job. And the mistake that most people make in transitioning out of the CEO role is they still stay there and keep doing the CEO job, right? Like, and so I, in the transitions that I've made, I've actually packed up all my crap and moved out of our office as a symbol, not only to the team, but also to myself that I am no longer the CEO here. And Jim mm. down the hall, uh, who we hired or Jane is now the CEO and they have the, not only do they have the title, uh, they actually have the authority and responsibility to do the things that we want. And so that change in behavior by myself has to happen. I mean, and it requires discipline. You got to get out of the office. You got to stop being in there. You got to stop second guessing. You got to stop going to the meetings and you got to stop acting like whatever your new role is, which is typically board chairperson or board member or just owner who's supporting Jim or Jane in their job as a new CEO. But that is an entirely different set of things that you're doing every day compared to what you did when you were running the business. For example, Let's say a big problem happens in a business and your team and you're the CEO, your team comes to you and says, hey, we got a big existential problem uh, in the business. Your job as the CEO in that situation is to respond and lean into that problem. Hey, let's get in there and get our hands dirty, fix that problem. Your job when you're the owner or the CEO or the chairman, when there's a big problem that's brought to your attention, you, you tell the CEO, man, that, that sounds awful. What do you need from me? Right. And it's a totally different thing where the CEO has to be allowed to keep CEOing. And that's what step four is all about. And the little things you do in terms of where you're, where you're officing, how you react to every individual situation, all that kind of stuff has to shift. And it's actually the step four is actually the hardest thing for everybody transitioning to bring in professional management to run their company is to change themselves. Cause well, mm -hmm. I mean, changing ourselves is really hard. <laughs> we're, st we're stubborn. Yeah. We're entrepreneurs for a reason. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, you're, you're mentioning it with CEO here, but I think this really goes, if you're a small business owner, it's basically almost any role that you hire for where it's a managing role, you've got to let them do their job. And I think a lot of people still kind of stick to that hub spoke style of them running everything. Um, and that's not going to allow you to grow and eventually step out. Right. So yeah, no, really valuable inputs there. I'd like to ask you one thing too, without getting too far off. The idea of the CEO, okay, which we've talked about, I'm going to 
narrow them down a little bit. They're the keeper of the vision and the keeper of the culture. You know, that's primarily, this is who we are. This is what we're doing. Let's go, guys. In theory, I talk with lots of companies about how we're going to replace the management. You know, if you're not here, how's the company going to run? It's that person is always really, really hard. Uh, or that's been my experience. Uh, how about you? I mean, it's finding that real person who is a real leader, not a number two, a real leader who has, who can manage, manage, lead the culture and the vision and where we're going. Your thoughts on that? Subject. Yeah. I, there's a reason why CEOs get paid well. Number one, it's a hard job. Number two, it's hard to find people to do that role. So I, I 100% agree with you. Um, you know, I think the other side of it, which I've seen in practice is CEO is a learned set of skills for people, um, with, provided they have the basic natural talents, right? And so, you know, there are lots of opportunities and I've been shocked to see how many people don't want to be an entrepreneur, but want to be a CEO of a small business. And I've had a ton of luck uh, going out and just being straightforward about the type of job it is, writing a CEO job description um, for a 10 or 20 or $30 million a year company. Like there are tons of people that want those jobs. Um, the tough part is because there's so few of those jobs, rarely do you see people who come in who have done it and you want to hire them. There's a bunch of, a bunch of them who've done it and they suck and you don't want to hire them. So almost everybody end up hiring that turns out great in that role has had some level of general management and kind of experience in their career. They're closer to mid career. So they've got all those fundamental skills, but nobody's really given them an opportunity to be a CEO at this point. And I've been really shocked at how many people there are that want those jobs, but they don't want to be entrepreneurs. There's just, there's thousands of probably even more than that, tens of thousands of them out there looking for those gigs. And every time I post one, I just get tons of applicants for it um, and they're shockingly good. So I would encourage people to at least test that and understand there are people out there. They just don't necessarily come in with a resume where they're like, yep, I've been a CEO for 10 years and I'm ready to take on your job. Most of the time they come in and you have to kind of put the pieces together and squint your eyes a little bit and be like, okay, this person has a really good chance of being great.